cool, welcome. Um, so this is continuing from um, a previous question. In the previous question, we were given this uh, simple production function, k to the 1 half times l to the 1 half is equal to y, our output. And then given these inputs, k, uh, I guess capital or land in this case, is 100, and then l labor is equal to 100, uh, we found that the wage rate was 1 half and that the rental rate of capital is 1 half. If you want to see that video, I'll put a link in the description. Um, so given this information, now what we're going to do is find out the share of output that goes to labor. And then I'll show you a little trick that you could use given the Cobb Douglas function, how to find that out like really quick, really instantaneously. Uh, and then we'll get to this section. We have like a shock to the economy. A plague is going to kill L, kill some of our population. It's going to reduce that number. And then we'll see what the effect is on wage rates, rental rate capital, and outputs, and that sort of thing. Uh, great, so let's get started. So here uh, we're asked in part C, what share of output does labor receive? Um, I see this referred to as the labor share of income a lot. So kind of like have that in the back of your mind as well. If you see the labor share of income, that's what we're talking about. So uh, the share of output that labor receives. So you have a production function here. Uh, it produces a certain amount of output. Um, and what it produces, that has to go somewhere, right? So what does it go to? Uh, in our economy, it either goes to pay for capital or it pays for labor. Um, and then this is like a super simplified production function. So you could think like a real production in the real function in the real world, like for a firm or a person or something like that. You know, you're going to have tons of factors, tons of inputs in here, and the output's going to go to those tons of inputs. However, you don't really need to have that for this simple uh, abstract model, you know, to make the points we want to make in intermediate macro. So we're going to limit ourselves to just two, but you know, a lot of that generalizes to more factors. Um, so basically, anything you produce, that money is going somewhere. You know, it's going to a savings account. It's going to pay for one thing. It's going to pay for another thing. In our simple economy, it's either going to pay for k, uh, I guess, land in this situation. I'm used to calling it capital though, um, or l labor in this case. So how do we figure out the labor share of income? Well, the labor share of income, uh, let's just do it this way. Labor share of income is, there's a certain amount of income, so Y, and a portion of that income goes to labor. So, we need to figure out all wages paid to all labor, and then we need to figure out what output is. Well, in the previous problem, we figured out what output is. Um, that was just y. So we know what that is. y, we found out, was 100. Uh, again, have a look at the video description for a link to that, how, how we came to that. Uh, and then what about all wages paid to all labor? How are we going to find that? Well, we figured out the wage rate. Remember, that was one half here. Um, so it's the wage rate times, and there's a certain amount of employees that were hired, there's a certain amount of labor that was employed. And that was L. That's the total number of people employed in this economy. So all wages, ooh, plural, paid to all labor is going to be the wage rate times however many people received it. So the wage rate was 0 0.5 times and then how much how much labor was there well that's what here 100 so one half times 100 that's uh, 50 so a total of 50 I guess units dollars whatever were given to labor and that was out of a hundred total that was possible to be given so the labor share of income the portion of output that went to labor uh, is equal to one half in our little simple economy Cool. And then also useful to know, I'm going to show you this little trick to find the labor share of income and the capital share of income for any Cobb-Douglas production function. So first off, a Cobb-Douglas function, production function takes this form. So Y output is equal to the following. So A is uh, like technology. Um, K is one of the factors and some input that you could put in. And it's raised to the alpha. In this case, alpha in this production function, alpha was one half because K is raised to the one half. Uh, and then alpha times L raised to the one minus alpha. Um, since alpha was one half, one minus one, one mi minus alpha is going to be one half. So you can see this production function right here is a version of Cobb-Douglas, where alpha is one half, and then A technology was just one. 
So this is a cogDouglas production function. Um, the other thing to note is it's con constant returns to scale. So if you were to double k and double l, uh, you would double output. Similar if you were to cut k and l in half exactly, you'd uh, have output. Anywho, this is the, the form that a Cobb Douglas production function takes. Um, and, and the labor share of income is always going to be equal to the exponent above labor. And the share of income that goes to capital is going to be equal to the exponent above alpha. Um, so given any of the Cobb Douglas production function, just by looking at this, you could know what the labor share of income is going to be, 1 minus alpha, and you know what the, the capital share of income is going to be, just alpha. So let me just summarize what I just said. So it's as simple as this. And so I could have actually just looked at this production function. I see that it's a Cobb-Douglas, because when you add up these two exponents, they sum to 1, so Cobb-Douglas. Uh, and I see that there's a 1 half above k, so I know capital share of income. The portion of output or production that goes to capital is going to be 1 half. Uh, and then I see that uh, above labor, you have a 1 half, and so I know labor, shares of, labor share of income is going to be 1 half. The proportion of output, total output that goes to labor is going to be 1 half. Uh, and then you know we double check that through this methodology right here. You could do the same for capital and see that 1 half goes to capital as well. Uh, simple as that. Hopefully this was helpful. Um, I'm going to do these other last three questions in the next video, which I'll link in the video description. Um, thanks and have a good day. Bye.